welcome to the Choosing Simple podcast. My name is Amy Fuel. Modern day life can be hard to navigate, but even a simple homesteading life can be, well, not so simple. In the Choosing Simple podcast, I talk about embracing raw emotions and real life in moments of motherhood, womanhood, and this homesteading lifestyle. Simplicity doesn't just happen. It's a choice we have to make every single day. So whether you're a tired mama washing dishes at 11 p.m. or a woman gardener battling those bugs, this podcast is for you. Let's talk about real life. Let's talk about choosing simple. Let's get started with today's podcast episode. Okay, so conveniently, um, I have tried to record this podcast episode a couple of times. If you're watching on YouTube, my hair is a wreck. I didn't even try. My house is a wreck. Everything's a wreck today. Uh, I intended on uh, getting up early this morning to record this podcast. Coincidentally, this podcast (laughs) is titled The Child Podcast or something like that. I haven't decided on the title yet. All things children, okay? Um, And this, so this isn't like an in-depth podcast. I'm going to break that down into other podcast episodes eventually. But when I woke up this morning, my intention was, okay, I'm going to be up at 6 o'clock. I'm going to get my coffee, get a snack, sit down and record this podcast episode. And before bed last night, I literally, my prayer was, Lord, if it is your will for me to record it early in the morning, please let it go seamlessly. Let everything go okay. Uh, Everything was a wreck this morning. (laughs) And uh, maybe that was necessary before I started recording this podcast. In fact, I may get interrupted as we are recording it, and that's fine. That's perfect because it's all about kids in this podcast episode. The one thing that I got a lot, so when I, right before I started season three, this season of the podcast, I asked on Instagram, what would you like for me to talk about? And one of the resounding topics that you asked for was please talk about how to manage your time more. How do you homestead with little kids? How do you work with little kids? How are you an entrepreneur with little kids? How are you, how do you do all these things with kids? And so I will uh, break out eventually into different sections of, of what I do and what I don't do and all of that stuff in other podcast episodes. But in this episode, I really want to just concentrate on on the being all in with your kids, being all in that moment with your kids. Um, We'll talk about a couple of different things and I'm just going to naturally kind of go into it. I'm not going to list it all out here for you because I'm not quite sure uh, what I'll get into until I start talking. Um, Anyhow, I want to, I want to start with this scripture and I think it's really important because I was thinking on it last night And I don't think we really think about scripture in depth very much. It's Psalm 127, three through five. And it says, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring, a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior, a children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Have you ever really stopped and thought about that scripture? It's nice. We like to give it on uh, baby shower gifts and we like to hang it up on wall hangings in our kids' rooms and things like that. But um, do we really think about that scripture? And so I was thinking about last night how children are like arrows in the quiver of a warrior. So my children, I, I take it and I try to pertain it to me. My children are my arrows in my quiver and I am a warrior. And I just stopped and I thought about that, how important it is that those arrows are only as good as the arrow maker. And obviously God is the arrow maker. So those, those arrows are amazing, but we are the stewards of those, those arrows once we have them. And those arrows are only going to be as efficient as the steward is. Just like your garden, you know, your garden is only going to be as good as your stewardship is, as, as the soil is, as, as all of those things are. You have to be attentive to that. And one of the things that my husband and I have been talking about recently is, you know, there's there are always these trends. I, I'm going to talk about this a lot on the podcast this, this season, but there are so many trends in Christian living, especially um, in the modern age of everybody has social media and everybody, you know. And one of the trends right now is that you should have 
kids until you can't have kids anymore. And I totally get that. You know, the Bible talks about um, how God opens or closes the womb or how um, God gives life. Even the scripture that I just said to you, it says that uh, children are a reward um, from God. And that that's not to say that if you suffer from infertility or anything like that, that God isn't rewarding you. That's not at all what that's saying, right? And so, um, you know, what I've had this conversation with other people, and I feel like we miss the stewardship portion of parenting. With this new trend of we should have as many kids as God will give us, I totally get it. But I also, you know, I found myself the other day just – sitting on the sofa and wishing I had more time to really sit down with uh, my children and just talk to them. You know, my oldest son is about to turn 13 and I feel like maybe for the first part of his life, I was so busy with life that I didn't really think about sitting down and just talking to him. And so now that he's a teenager, I'm like, oh man, I I really miss that opportunity. I feel like, I mean, I'm not saying I was a horrible parent and never talked to him. That's not what I'm saying. But um, I wish that I had been more intentional with our conversations about life and about God and about just everything. And so I go back to those arrows and I think, you know, this is something I'm working through on my own right now. If I had, I know my limits. And if I had, you know, five more kids... And I'm already feeling this way now. Goodness gracious. I I wouldn't be able to take care emotionally necessarily. I wouldn't be able to do life the way I wanted to do life with those children and really pour into them. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying I disagree that, that you should have as many kids as God wants you to have. That's not what I'm saying. But it took me back to that scripture about the arrows in the quiver of a warrior and, um, And how that warrior, you know, I think of arrows back then that were handmade, even some arrows now are, of course, but, and that warrior had to take care of them. He had to be intentional about these arrows. There's another scripture that I really enjoy, and it is Genesis 33, 14. And it says, this is where Jacob and Esau are having a conversation. Jacob's coming back in, in making good with Esau and Jacob and his family and and community were traveling And Jacob says, so let my Lord, he was talking about Esau, go on ahead of his servant while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and herds before me and at the pace of the children. When I read that scripture, it's been years ago now, I think I may have even done a a short podcast episode or maybe a Facebook post or something about it. Um, Going at the pace of the children as a parent, that can be just so difficult sometimes. Um, you want to say, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We're always rushing our kids, right? We're always rushing through life. And when you rush, things tend to be a little bit less uh, efficient. They tend to be a little bit less beautiful as they might be if you took your time to really pour into it. And so for me personally, when someone says, when this new trend says you should have as many kids as God wants you to have, you should, you know, you should never use contraception, uh, which by the way, I'm totally against uh, hormonal birth control. Absolutely. But let me just speak to that for a second. I truly believe that God wants us to be a good steward of our children and of our bodies. And yes, I believe that children are a heritage and a blessing from God. I also think you need to remember that if you are not stewarding your children well, if you are not stewarding the children that you already have well, if they do not know the Lord, if they are not active in the Lord in a relationship with him, then having more children on top of that really shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be um, pouring into the children that you already have. And so I just want to kind of speak to that because I feel like that's a very dangerous trend right now. It's kind of like saying you should have children no matter what. And, um, and there are a lot of bad family situations, right? Um, you can think of quite a few. We, I can think of plenty of families that have children that shouldn't have children, you know. But we always have to go back to, um, you know, we make our personal choices as well. There are personal consequences. There are personal choices that we make. And so as I'm walking through this myself, stewarding my children, um, you know, that's something that I am personally going through. Do we have more children? Do we wait uh, a little while longer before we 
certainly before I get pregnant again, um, and also being a good steward of my body. So my body has certainly taken a toll. My body is not, uh, I'm not healthy when I'm pregnant and I'm just sick all the time. And so that takes a really big toll on my body. And so I normally take a couple of years before thinking about pregnancy again, because I have to get my body back in order. And so those are all things I want to you to think about. If, if you've seen that trend and you're, and you're like, oh man, I have to have more kids because that's my duty as a woman. I have to be a baby making machine. You know, that's what a lot of these people kind of put out there. Um, but I just want to speak a little bit more to that. I think most of the people who are talking about this really agree with me. You know, be a good steward of your children, be a good steward of your body before you add more children into your home. Um, but I also know people who don't understand that and they're like, well, you know, God says I should have as many children as he'll give me. And they, they are living, uh, not so good lives, you know, not, not that they're living in sin or anything, but they are just, they are very overwhelmed, very overwhelmed. And it's, it's breaking their family because they are not healthy. Their children aren't healthy. They're not walking as closely with God as possible. So anyhow, that's one thing I wanted to touch on today, but going back to, the original question of how are we doing life with children? You know, a lot of um, the trend stemmed from, I know where it stemmed from, is that the world sees children as an inconvenience. And children are, are not an inconvenience. But, you know, my midwife and I had this conversation the, the other day. My husband kind of chimed in uh, as well. And he was talking about how, you know, they make these sleeping pods for newborns and infants now where you can place them in this sleeping pod and you can zip it up. It's like a little tent and it's pitch black in there and it has some sound muffling abilities so that you can't hear your baby crying as loudly when you're trying to get them to go to sleep. It's essentially sleep training. Now, I'm not bashing on anyone who does sleep training, but it was just... It, it was, to me, it's, it's horrific that you're going to put a baby in a dark spot, a baby that has been so close to you and your body and your heartbeat and just you for so many months. And now you're like, here, go in the tent, be in the dark, cry by yourself. You know, we're not teaching children anything except that no one's going to come. And so I've, I've always been more of an attached parent in my parenting style because that's the way I believe that God is. And I wrote a post on, on Instagram about this the other day, you know, thank the Lord that he doesn't zip us up in a dark space and leave us crying our eyes out. Right. Um, if I can, I'm going to go on my Instagram page right now. I'm going to read this to you in case you haven't seen it. Uh, I said, uh, and I, and I stand by this today too. Motherhood and parenting are hard, but it is one of the most rewarding things you will ever do. Society looks at children as if they are an inconvenience. I've heard the word said, well, we have kids because that's what you're supposed to do after you get married, right? They make every gadget in the world in order for parenting to be easier or more convenient. They even make these sleeping pods so you can put your baby in a completely dark space and zip it up so that the sound of them crying it out is muffled for you. But parenting is supposed to be inconvenient. I'm going to interject here. I go back to that verse in Genesis where Jacob says, you know, I could be running ahead. I could be going with Esau and I could, I could place this on someone else to do, but I'm going to go at the pace of the children. After all, parenting is the most selfless act you could ever accomplish. I've handed my body over for nine months at a time on three occasions already in my life. I have nursed babies for years. Convenient? Not at all. I am raising a teenager with an attitude but an amazing heart, and he is such a hard worker. He's with his dad working today. I'm raising a toddler who climbs walls but is so smart. He's so smart, and I prayed for that uh, when I was pregnant with him, that he would be wise beyond belief, and he is. And then we decided to throw a newborn into the mix recently who needs to be nursed every two hours, generally right when you're in the middle of a project like this podcast or laundry or relaxing cup of coffee. Convenient? Not at all. Amazing? Absolutely. A blessing? You bet. And so as I have more babies later in life, I realize that cries and attitudes aren't inconvenient at all. They're beautiful. 
I rejoice that I get to hear the cry of my babies and I snatch them up because in an instant those cries could cease. But also not coming to their cry simply teaches them exactly that. No one is coming to help you. I rejoice, though not always, when I get to teach the older ones why it is or isn't okay to do something because it means that I'm raising the next generation of warriors that this world will need to be fierce. And those warriors will have their own quivers full of arrows, hopefully. I rejoice in the hardships of motherhood or what some call inconveniences because parenting was never supposed to be easy. It is the ultimate sacrifice, but the ultimate honor and blessing. And I'm going to talk to that sacrifice uh, bit in just a second. I think of how often God must shake his head at us, but I also think of how he never leaves me crying or begging for his attention and love in the dark. Being a parent is the first Jesus your kids will ever see and know. That is not an inconvenience. That is a mission field. When I posted this post on Instagram the other day, uh, I don't know if this person meant to post a rebuttal or if they just conveniently repo- they posted something kind of in opposition to what I was saying about parenting being a sacrifice. Um, and they said that parenting is not a sacrifice, so we need to stop saying that, that we we should be joyful and we should choose to, to believe that it's not a sacrifice. But I want you to understand that God mirrors us after his story. God mirrors marriage after the government institution that he creates. There's a headship and stuff falls underneath of it. And God mirrors parenting after the way that God parents. And God sacrificed his son for us, his, his children that are grafted into him. He made sacrifices He is God. He could do anything he wanted to do. But instead, he sacrificed for us because he loves us. So parenting is a sacrifice. You can choose to be a parent. um, And unfortunately, nowadays, you can choose not to be a parent. And that's where we get it wrong. And I think that's that's kind of where um, Christianity pushes this narrative that's not entirely true. And and we have young women that are living in sin and they're getting pregnant and they're saying, oh, parenting is an inconvenience and I don't want to make this sacrifice because it doesn't make me happy. And so we as moms especially need to to learn that what we say has has hold on people. And I think it's really important to be honest. Yes, parenthood is a sacrifice. I chose and and even tried for years and couldn't get pregnant. But I, when I did get pregnant, I did choose it. I chose to be pregnant. I chose to carry that baby. I chose to give up my body to all of the changes. And I still choose to sacrifice. But I love it. And it brings me joy. And so when women are asking me, how do you do it? What are you doing? How can you live life and do all the things that you do with children? Because it's so inconvenient. They always need something, right? As soon as you sit down and you think you've got it, then they're like, give me water, give me food, snuggle with me, you know, turn on the cocoa melon, whatever. And I, I just go back to Genesis And my response is, I go at the pace of my children. I do that because if that was good enough for Jacob, that's good enough for me. And I still think of all the things that Jacob accomplished in his lifetime. And he had way more children. (laughs) But also because I think of the way that God parents. And so I know that there is blessing and going at the pace of my children. And I have had to learn, and it, as an, a very outgoing entrepreneur, um, in the beginning, it, it was very, very hard for me. I remember when we had our second child, uh, there was a nine-year gap between our first and our second child, and by that time, I was already a successful entrepreneur. And I had him, and I stressed out because I could not live and do work the way that I had been doing it for nine years before he came. Um, 
it was easier to do it without him. It was easier to not stop every hour to feed him. He was an every hour baby uh, when it came to nursing. So what I realized is instead of stressing and worrying about it, I had to adapt to it. I did, not him. We bring children into this world believing that they have to adapt to us, and that is not at all true. And I really hope that you're learning that from just just from that chapter or that verse in Genesis. Children are are such a blessing, and I feel like when we try to busy life, and yes, that includes just keeping on having more children that distract you at times. Um, when we try to busyfy our life, we don't have time for our kids. We want our children to adapt to our lives when they're born, but we don't remember that they are in training. They don't really know what that means. They don't know how to adapt to us. And so certainly I've trained my children. My first child, he got used to going to meetings with me as a toddler and he did really well. My second child probably couldn't do that because he bounces like crazy off the walls. Um, but my, my second son, he learned quickly that uh, when mommy was doing something as he's gotten older, I, that I need to do that. But from the age of zero to about two and a half, uh, that's not possible. They, they are very needy and they need your time. And so I adapted. I would, uh, for many, many years, I have stayed up even before having more children and didn't work uh, until they went to bed. And so that looked like working from 10 to 12 or 10 to 1 in the morning. But then I would sleep in the next morning. Um, I, we had a rule where they were not allowed to get out of bed until 7 o'clock in the morning. And that was a firm rule that we had, and they obeyed that rule. And so they would not get up until 7 o'clock in the morning so I could sleep in until 7 in the morning. Um, you know, if if we were with my second son, he slept with me. And so even, if he, even when he didn't sleep with me, when my husband would leave for work, he would place him in bed with me so that um, if he did wake up, I could nurse him back to sleep and I could get those extra hours of sleep. And so there's different ways around it. And so ultimately, you have to adapt. And I, and I think that's what Jacob was really telling us. And it's little scriptures like these where we're like, oh, this story's about Jacob and Esau. What's it going to have anything to do about parenting? But every time you think about that, every time you think that kids are an inconvenience, I want you to think of that. He says, so let my Lord go on ahead of his servant. This, he was talking about Esau. While I move along slowly, at the pace of the flocks and the herds before me, and at the pace of the children. He was being a good steward, not only of his flocks and herds by staying with them, and how we can definitely uh, sympathize with that as homesteaders, but he was also going at the pace of his children and all the children that were walking because it was his responsibility and duty to adapt to these situations around him in his life as a parent, as a patriarch, and as a herdsman. And so as we begin to unpackage for a while, I don't know how long season three is going to go on, uh, kind of some woes and some tips on parenting and how to live life with kids I want you to keep in mind those two scriptures that I went over and realize that you are a warrior. God has created you to be a warrior for him, and we have the ultimate great commission, right, to go out and make disciples in all the world. And that starts with our kids at home. And if we are not focusing on our children at home first, nothing else, just our kids, then we are wasting our time. You know, the concept is that we should have more and more kids because we're putting more and more Christians into the world. But are you? If you don't take the time to steward the children that you have, are you putting out more Christians into the world? I know plenty of kids that came from good Christian families, good Christian families, and it didn't matter because some of those parents we're so concerned about making disciples of others, but not of their children. And then I want you to think about the pace of your family. And it's just a season. It literally is just a season. Your children will only walk slowly for so long. 
your life will only be on hold for so long and your life doesn't have to be on hold. You just have to adapt to it and find a new rhythm that works for you. For me, that looked like maybe bringing on more people for my larger organization uh, to do more work, which I did this year and last year. Uh, But if you are a smaller entrepreneur, it may look like you just being a better steward of your time. Womp womp. (laughs) Being a better steward of your time and having to adapt and realizing that we were never created to live an easy life. It's just not easy now that sin is in the world, especially. Um, We have to adapt and we have to steward not only our children and our bodies and our children's bodies and our marriage and our household and our gardens and our animals and all of that. We have to steward our time. And if we do not do that, we will become overwhelmed and stressed and anxious and angry and all of those things that are not supposed to be in our lives. The Bible says that whatever is true and good, think on these things. And so when you're feeling frustrated with your children, when you're feeling, man, they're a little bit inconvenient, I really wanted to do this, but they're kind of messing up my game today, remember, one, that you have to move at their pace. Two, that you are the steward of this ship and this homestead and this life. And so you are responsible for pouring into them. Three, that this is just a season. This is just a season of life. As you have little ones, as they get older, trust me, as they get older, it gets easier with time. It does not get easier with attitude. So you're, it's kind of a trade-off. Um, you know, but most importantly, remember that our children should never be just on their own. Let them work with you. If you have older children, give them a job to do for you, uh, whether it's housework or whether it's your entrepreneurial work, whether it's homestead work or just work in general. Like I said, our oldest son is is working with my husband. Most weeks he works with him. If you have little ones, limit screen time. And then when screen time comes for the projects that you need to do, they're excited about it. This is what's happening right now in my house. My my toddler, uh, well, my newborn is asleep by some miracle, and my toddler is watching Cogamelon over on in the other room because we are reduced screen time on certain days of the week. And now he's like, oh, well, mom has a project. I get to go watch TV. It's the only reason he hasn't bothered me. But that won't last long. There are things you can think about to adapt, but your children should not be adapting to you. You should not be neglecting them. And remember that living this simple life means that you're choosing to choose simple you know what? If something doesn't get done that day, I have learned not to fret about it. If there's a deadline I need to make, obviously I make it. But that might mean I stay up late. That might mean I work all day long on that project. I might um, sit down a hundred times, not even kidding you, and get up a hundred times and be interrupted a hundred times. But I still just do it. And you hear the toddler calling for me. <laughs> He's saying he wants watermelon. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you gleaned a little bit of information from those two uh, scriptures. There's one last scripture I want to leave you with. It's Proverbs 17, 6, and it says, Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. Think on that one. Think about your grandchildren are a crown to you as you have them, and that you are the pride of your children. And even if your kids don't feel like it quite right now, they're not very prideful of you yet, remember that as they get older, that's when things really start becoming apparent to them. Oh, mom really poured into me, and I'm so thankful that she took the time to pour into me, or dad did, or or whatever. <sighs> don't set your children on the back burner for the sake of having a successful business or having a clean home, love on your babies. 
take that time. Guess what? And and I know a lot of women have a hard time because some women live in, in marriages where their husband is constantly kind of got their thumb on them, like, hey, you didn't get this done or that done. Make sure your kids are taken care of first. Make sure that you are pouring Christ into them in every way. That doesn't mean you have to be preaching scripture to them all the time, but it does mean that you need to be living an abundant Christ-filled life that mirrors his parenting and and his image. Because you're the first Jesus that they will ever see and they will ever know. And if you are an exasperated, exhausted, angry parent, oftentimes our older kids think that's what God is too. All right, guys, thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, don't forget to choose simple.